As soon as I say the word rugged, you probably already know what I'm thinking about. A rugged man is someone who is defined by his relationship with the physical world. These are guys who bend nature to their will. These are the guys who are the lumberjacks and the cowboys. They're the iron workers and they're the rugged individualists. A rugged guy is someone who is capable of fitting the old school, traditionally American definition of masculinity. Now, if you fall in this way, there's definitely an aesthetic that goes with it. I do not represent that aesthetic at all, right? Bravo represents that aesthetic very well. It's a very good representation of the rugged aesthetic. Okay, let's say that you don't fall into that. Let's say that you are someone who is better defined by your relationship within the social or even the financial world. That's the refined aesthetic. These men are men who shape the world in their image based on their relationships with other people, based on their relationships with society, based on what they're able to do financially and through social status and through civilization, okay? The refined guys are the guys who are the bankers or the nine to fivers to even some extent. These are the guys who are the media moguls and the men who helped build the entire Western world that we even live in, okay? Again, very much an aesthetic that goes with that. But let's say that you don't fall in with either one of those. The third one is rakish. So we've got rugged, refined, and rakish. Now the rakish archetype, the rakish man, is defined by his rebellion. He's the kind of guy who likes to break the rules. He's the guy who likes to, my mother-in-law calls it, throw rocks at squirrels. He just likes to get a reaction out of people. <laughs> you know what I mean? The rakish guy just loves to be a little bit, a little bit dark triad, even though it's not necessarily super Machiavellian. He's the kind of guy, who, and he certainly could be, but the moral rake is someone who just likes to break the rules a little bit. He's defined by being a rebel, he's defined by going against the grain, and he's happy to take on that social risk and feel like he's on his own as opposed to having to follow the way that the rest of the world works. Now if you wanna know where you fall within that, because that's the biggest thing, is knowing which one of those three islands to swim towards, once you find that, then you can start to double down even more because there are sub-tribes even within there. You can start to find who the men are that fit within that archetype, and then you can start to build yourself that way. What's fun is when you realize that you actually have an element of all three, and then you start to play with them a little bit. I'm kind of a mix of refined and rake, which is why I'm wearing a sport coat, even though it's stupid hot under these lights. And, but it's bright yellow, right? Like, I'm not wearing this if I'm going to a board meeting in New York City but I'm certainly gonna wear this for an event like this or if I'm at a men's show in Florence, Italy. Because it, for me, it's the right balance of who I am, who my audience is, who my tribe is, and how all those things work together. That's why I can wear something like this and feel comfortable in it and look confident in it. Because I am using this clothing as a way to externally express what I want you to know and respect about me and what I know and respect about myself. If you know all this, if you have the understanding of the philosophy behind your clothing, if you understand the approach of power versus appeal, you understand where you fall within those archetypes, then you're no longer being worn by your clothing. It's no longer just a neutral, and you certainly don't ever look cute. What you do is you convey a sense of power, you convey a sense of confidence, and a sense of charisma that people will pick up on before a word ever crosses your lips, before eye contact is ever made, or before they ever know anything else about you. And again, it can either buoy up and exaggerate the things that are communicated through your posture and your body language, or it can work to contrast it. But I'll tell you that when you have your style down pat and you know that it's perfectly communicating what you want it to, you can't help but stand a little bit taller. You can't help but project your voice a little bit better to hold deeper eye contact because you feel like you're actually expressing your genuine self to the rest of the world and it makes you feel bulletproof.